What happens when a grim and murderous new vigilante takes up residence in Green Arrow's own backyard? Well, let's hop on in together to Green Arrow number 43 and find out, shall we? Alrighty then, so this is technically the second issue from the Bensons, the writers you may know from TV's 100, who are now the new creative team on Green Arrow, as we join the book An Evil Slumlord has evicted a bunch of people from their low-income housing with plans to tear down their building and put up new expensive accommodations for rich people. Now, this is understandably horrifying, but unfortunately for Green Arrow and his newly returned sidekick without a book, Roy Harper, this guy's technically not breaking the law. He's just being a jerk about it, especially because he wants to blow up the building in front of everybody. Even though one particularly stubborn family refuses to leave, which means our heroes have to rush on in and save the day. Okay, murder might very well be a crime, and the heroes are going to have to get involved in this one. The sleazy slumlord ends up slipping away, no doubt leaving a trail of slime behind him, but all things considered, this was a pretty good day of superheroing for Green Arrow and Arsenal. It's also been a while since they've been partners and they're still hammering out a couple kinks here and there. Green Arrow desperately wants to reveal to Roy his new position within the Justice League, more or less keeping their kill switch. And Roy too seems to have one or more secrets to share with his mentor. What else is new in the life of Oliver Queen? Well, after Kate Spencer, the woman who would be Manhunter, got him off on that murder rap not so long ago, he decided to hire her to be legal rep for all of Queen Industries. Green Arrow and Black Canary are also getting ready to take that next big step in their relationship too. They're moving in together, no, not to a big fancy high rise or mansion, not nah, just a nice little starter up. One in the bad side of town and one that Dinah says that she's going to do all the renovations in herself. You know, I'm happy to see in an era in DC Comics where it seems like they're breaking up all the couples Green Arrow and Black Canary can stay together. Now later, the two lovebirds end up meeting Roy for dinner at a chili place, of course, because Green Green Arrow loves his chili, don't you know? It's at dinner too, Roy ends up blurting out that he was seeking help at Sanctuary. Want to know more about that? Apparently go read Tom King's Hero in Crisis event because this book is getting a tie-in of all things. Our hero's nice evening gets hijacked by a brand new viral video featuring a new masked villain calling themselves the Citizen. You know what, I gotta say it's a little refreshing to see it be a viral video for a change and not a bad guy hijacking the airwaves. What does the Citizen want? Well, what any villain wants, to read his personal personal manifesto where everyone can hear it. The creepy thing is, though, is that this guy's views actually line up quite a bit with how Green Arrow feels. The Citizen's main talking points are how, for too long in Seattle, the poor and powerless have been stepped on by the rich and powerful, and that the only justice that's worth a damn anymore is the justice that comes from trial by public opinion. To test this theory, the Citizen has kidnapped the slumlord from earlier and is going to execute him live on stream, but only if the people watching the stream vote for for it to happen. Ah, I see what we got here. It's Jigsaw meets that crappy Diane Lane movie, Untraceable. Does anyone remember that one? I remember that one. Green Arrow and Black Canary saddle up their bikes and do everything they can to trace the citizen's signal. Unfortunately, they get there much too late. The slumlord was executed and all at the behest of the people of Seattle. Furthermore, the citizen says that this is only the beginning and that he has a bunch of other one percenter targets all ready to go, including but not limited to Oliver Queen. Dun Dun, dun. So that was Green Arrow number 43, everybody, and overall I gotta say, I think the Bensons get things off to a nice start here. They got a good grasp on the characters, while also making it feel very unique and very much their own. As a big Roy fan, I'm super happy to finally see him back in a Green Arrow book, and they seek to imply that he's gonna be here to stay now that he's not on any team book. The Citizen is also a really smart idea for Green Arrow as a foe, someone who's basically just a more extreme version of Oliver Queen, while also allowing the writers to show shine a light on trial by public opinion, and how that can all get really out of hand. We don't need to look too far to look for examples of that in the real world, do we? Overall, I give this one an 8 out of 10. Excited to see what the Bensons will do with this book moving in the future. Hey there, everyone. It's Cape Joel again. Thanks so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not take a look at some of these other videos I've been working on from the channel? Then, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook, at Cape Joel, so you always know what's coming out next. And hey, if you like what I do and are feeling in a supportive mood, you can also check out my Patreon link down in the description. Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. It would really help me out. So, until we meet again, everyone, this has been Cape Jewel. I will be back again next time with more great comic content that smacks of greatness. Bye-bye, everyone.